In this video, I'm gonna show you how to play the song Stuck With You. And let me start by saying that this song doesn't really have the piano part that I'm about to play, but this is almost a recreation of the guitar. And I think it's a great way to play it if you're a singer or if you have a singer in your life. Sometimes even when you perform with an artist like Ariana Grande, you may change parts and you may have a piano pretty much cover the guitar part. So that will be the case for this. Uh, you're gonna be playing four different chords and important to do them very short, I think for the right hand because of the style. It's a six by eight, which will be count one, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that first chord is an A flat major. That's gonna be A flat, C and E flat with one fingers one, three, and five. Let me also mention, I think it's important to learn all of your chords, 12 of them for majors and 12 of them are minors. That way, when you get a song like this, you're not struggling. So second chord, C minor seven, that's gonna be G, B flat, C, and E flat. And I think it's a good choice to do it right there so you don't have a lot of jumping. And that's also gonna be played twice and also short. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Immediately after, we're gonna jump to a D flat major. That's gonna be in inversion. So I'm gonna do A flat, D flat, and F. And there, definitely try to put your finger three on D flat, because this is a little bit of a big spread. So you wanna make sure that your fingers reach. That's also gonna be played twice in the same pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna do an F minor seven. That's gonna be somewhat incomplete because I'm not playing one note because it's almost being reinforced by my left hand. But we're gonna play that as C, E flat, A flat. So that will be with the right hand, one, two, and five over here. As you can see, they're all uh, close to one another, not a lot of jumping. And then we're gonna go, that's only once, they're gonna go to a B flat, E flat, and G. And that's gonna be an E flat major chord. Let me remind you that you can always slow down the, down the tutorial on the settings of the video if you wanna, I guess, hear the information slower and also check when I play it to check it slowly. So uh, let me play that with drums so you have an idea. Uh, it's going to be, so be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, second one. It's a C minor seven. Third one. And then next one. And it changes. So there, uh, I would practice just the right hand. I think the left hand goes almost in the holes for pretty much the whole, uh, I guess, uh, arrangement. So you're not gonna be playing both hands at the same time. So I do think it's very important to practice them separate. Uh, let's start with the left hand. The left hand, what's important probably is to try to use different fingers so you can cover as many of the notes. I do think you need to switch position and depending on your age, some of the choices of numbers may have to change. But let's start with, it's gonna be a, a flat. Now on the left, I do think you should hold the notes longer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Now, so there I'm doing a flat. I'm doing a flat, I think it's four times, one time, then short, press and hold it again. And then I have this little run, which is gonna be a flat, b flat, and c. And there I would, would suggest probably doing with fingers five, four, and three. Now, uh, if I play it, I guess in the context of the drum beat, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that I think is important to, to get those little runs first, you know, make sure that your hands are, I guess, uh, strong and, and clear. You don't wanna be doing this with two hands when both hands are really struggling. And this is not a bad one to start counting out loud when you're practicing something like this. Because for example, that last uh, note of the first bar, would be on six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So the other two are on five and six for the A flat, B flat, going back to the one. Counting out loud, I think is a really uh, good ability to be able to stitch things correctly. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of almost like mental focus to be able to do it, but definitely it's, it's gonna make you a lot better musician and it's gonna make you be able to, things, uh, to practice things faster, get them uh, down quicker. So after that, we're gonna have C, and same thing. Then there's a little gap there. Then we're gonna do D flat to 
D flats there. On that D flat, I think you almost need to change your position. We were doing the C with finger three, but I would suggest playing the next D flat with finger three as well. So that way you can cover the next run, which is gonna be this, D, E flat, F. And I think there you definitely wanna reach this F with finger one. So let me do it from the D flat, it will be D flat, so it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that, if I play it a little bit slower again, super important, I would say probably count it, and probably even like jot it down on a paper and put the, the beats, so that way you can count it when you're practicing it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And those two E flats go on five and six. So one more time, let me, I guess, play it with the drum beat so you have an idea. The song for the most part repeats uh, this section. There's another section, but we're not gonna cover it in this video, just to try to keep the video short. But one advice that I would say is maybe you can play all of this an octave lower, just to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, a fuller sound on the piano. If you do have a piano with enough keys, so one, two, three, four, five. Now there, uh, my left hand is probably out of the shot, but you can take the notes that you just played on the left hand, just go an octave lower, and that's gonna make it sound, I think, a little bit like fuller. So that should cover uh, the whole thing. Uh, I think it's uh, not a super intricate pattern. Definitely practice it hand separate, and definitely practice it with a, a drum beat. And another cool thing, I think once you get it, try to play it with a recording, because it's gonna allow you to get a little bit of the feel. Like music, to me, has very different feels, and you wanna recreate not only the notes, anyone can play the notes, is the feel what you're probably more after than the notes. And that's something that I think when you play it with the recording and you play it over and over, that type of, I guess, feel still almost starts to go in, into your playing. So different songs would have different feels and I think it's important to learn from all of them.